Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I got a slightly different type of video for you. We're going to be looking at geographic data. The data is going to come from the Data and Brief Journal, where we're going to be looking at water samples from various different locations in Poland. And the goal of the study was to understand the composition of water that led to more eukaryotic symbionts of native invasive gamers. And so, overall, the study looks at the various aspects of the water. It then measures the amount of native and invasive organic species present. However, I want to show you how we can actually plot this geographic data. Most times we will look at primarily the analytical side, the measurement side, but there is some information that we can find in this geographic data and great ways to visualize that data. Let's get started. And so to begin, we're going to import a couple libraries, pandas being our go-to for importing data, and then Plotly Express for actually visualizing that data. You'll see where this styles list comes in a little bit later. Next in this cell, I have a number of files. We're going to focus primarily on file three, which are the analytical parameters, but as well, they have the geographic data, the latitude and longitude of the measurement data for each sample. I then developed a column map of the original column names and a more Pythonic version of those column names that I'll then use to update my columns. And this sort of tool here could be generated using ChatGPT, where I actually pass in the original column names as ChatGPT to make the column names more Pythonic and then to return a dictionary for me without me having to retype or use a series of regular expressions to update this myself. So just one good way to enhance your efficiency. So let's run these cells and we see that we now have a reasonable data table. So the next thing I want to do is begin plotting that data. And so if we look at our columns, df.columns.toList, you see we have a number of columns here, but the ones that are most important for this particular part are the longitude and latitude columns that are now the actual coordinates we can use to build this map. To build the map, we will use the px.scatterMapBox method. And inside this, you see it takes a number of familiar arguments, such as the data frame, and instead of X and Y, we have latitude and longitude. So let's pass in our data frame as DF and then lat as equal to the latitude column. So latitude and then lon equal to the longitude column. And if you've seen this before, you've, you may have run into this issue here where if you run the cell as is, you get this JavaScript no valid map box. And so it doesn't have a way to style the figure. And so this is where that styles list comes in, where we can pass in a number of different options as open street, white background, and many others. And so let's actually take a quick look at that. And there's a couple of different ways you can pass this in. One way is to set the map box style equal to our styles list, which is one of those string values from above. And if we look at styles zero, we see that we have our open street map. And so this is just one way to visualize the data but there's a little bit more we should do as we think about how this data will look. So one thing we should do is change the shape of the map. We will set the width equal to 1200 and let's set the height equal to 600. And you see that it now kind of gives us more of a view of the map. And we can also change the default zoom of the map so that it's maybe a little bit tighter in on our points of interest, which are these small blue points, which again is, is this Polish region of the world. And we can see the various bodies of water that were being sampled in this study. So let's change the zoom. The default zoom is eight. Let's change the default zoom to seven. And you can see how now we have a better view of these points. And so as part of this, let's take a look at the other columns. So let's call the points by habitat. You can see now we have a number of small points where the red are the brackish water. So this is where we have salt water and fresh water mixing and the blue are the salt water bodies of water. And then let's do something else. Let's change the size equal to make that equal to the host density. So here we can see we have a variable called host density. And one more thing, let's change the size max equal to something larger. Let's set it equal to 50 so we can see more dynamic sizes. And so we see that freshwater overall tends to have a larger host density. 
indicated by larger points. However, we can see that there are lots of size variation between um, the various water samples. Of course, we can change other things like such as which parameters we are plotting. And so we can even include host species or other types of categorical data could be encoded. But now you can see how we can begin plotting this geographic data. One thing is we can also look at different map box styles. So this was the map box with the white background. Two is the map box with the Cardo positron. We can also do Cardo black matter as the next option. You can see this might go well in, in, different, in a different type of presentation. And then let's just look at one more. Let's look at the stamen terrain. And this gives you a different idea of the type of terrain. And so some of these different plots make more sense in different context. Let's go back to our original one. And there you have it. This is just one way to build a simple plot that allows you to look at some of the geographic data that we can encode the different parameters such as size and color with some of the other categorical and quantitative data we have in our data set. In any case, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.